Um, All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so hi guys, I'm Alyssa and this is Jennifer. Um, we um, own and founded um, Estate Agency Marketing. Whoa, talking is hard today. Um, and we aim to help uh, estate agents in the UK bring over some of the American um, marketing techniques to the UK and better help you serve your community and market your business. We work with uh, Luke with KW Exeter to really make sure that falls under um, the the training that Keller Williams does itself, uh, such as the Quantum Late coming up on Thursday and kind of fits into their strategies for building your business as well. So um, we're really loving it. Yeah. So um, today we're going to talk about video, um, which... I love, I'm like obsessed with it. Although I'm not often in front of the camera. Um, I do encourage others to do it. Um, and you will see us on our mom empire, um, account where I am usually dressed how I am during the day. So I'm not usually made up, um, like this. So that's kind of why I want to talk to you guys about this a little bit more. Um, so today we're going to talk about reviewing your target audience, which hopefully you guys joined the last one, but if you didn't, that's okay. We're going to touch on that just a smidge. And then we're going to go over the video goals. They do differ a little bit from your overall business goals. So I wanted to focus in and kind of winnow that down a little bit more. Um, and then we're going to talk about what platforms to post to and why you would want to post to them. Um, and then we're also going to talk about like why video, because it's, it's a big one. Um, and then we're going to talk content creating and video strategy. So here we go. Um, and then this is our, our next slide. Is our, yeah, we're going to try it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to speak fast. We're going to aim high and speak fast. Yeah. Um, so I think we kind of did introductions. Luke, we want to give you a second, introduce yourself because you are the reason we're here and our advisor, and we're just so glad we know you and you're helping us. So. Well, feelings mutual. So, so you know, I've been an agent, obviously. So, for the benefit, James, we know one another, right? And then, but this this is being recorded, so folk can watch this, you know, at another time. So, I I, I was an agent in in the U.S. Um, with Keller Williams, and and I I went out there and I built my own independent brand named unimaginatively Luke Jones Real Estate. And so, I think that's <laughs> the point, right? Is that you can create your own authentic personal brand based around the the single most biggest fact that, that that is this this is your this is your brand it's your it's your face it's your name if you can use digital media and video in a smart way you can you can build trust at scale because we know that more people are going to see that content and so as we'll talk about today video really is just the fastest way to access people and and it's the tool of the of the moment that seems to work best at kind of scaling trust so that's me and then and then jennifer and Alyssa came into my life about four years ago um jennifer about four years ago uh during i guess it was during the phase when when it was pre-covid but it was kind of when when this digital marketing thing and 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 then, um, and, and since then, we've, we've really kind of tried to, you know, create an audience for the authentic personal brand. And now we're doing the same for our agents at Keller Williams Exeter. So, yeah. Yeah, to that point, that really was the phase where people were transitioning from being um, raving fans of companies and becoming raving fans of people or people of the companies, which is where all of this really falls into. Very well said. Yeah, so I think you had a great segue for our <laughs> next slide. So we're going to talk about reviewing your target audience. Um, we touched on this last month about kind of the general audience and how you kind of get to them, but um, we kind of wanted to winnow it down a little bit more for reviewing your target audience for your videos. Um, so that gives you a little bit more time to think about, I need to know the demographics of where I'm living. I need to know where schools are. I need to know where workout facilities are. If people are interested in that, I need to know where the good shopping areas are, how to get to the market, how to get to the gas station, you know, just making sure I'm, I'm knowledgeable in my, in about my community. Um, and then also, you know, thinking about the market prices and stuff like that. Um, and uh, then, oh, Are we okay? Yeah, no good. I'm trying to let no someone into the I'm room, gonna... which, uh, which for some reason I, I can't now do. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Um, okay, and then we are gonna talk, oh, then you need to know your client interests. So again, that kind of goes deeper than just getting to know them and talking about them. Um, more so thinking about common things that have come up, like common questions that your clients have asked you, um, or maybe there's one question that you get asked a lot. So that should be an entire video. If it can be a whole video series, make it a whole video series. Um, because more often than not, if you're getting that question a lot, a lot more people have that question and need an answer. So that can make you seem, and probably you are very knowledgeable. So it's good to kind of think about what you've been asked in the past, think about your previous clients, think about your current clients, and just find, find ways to answer their questions via video, which I know sounds scary, but we'll cover, we'll cover that. Um, and so then a oh. real life example of kind of that spiel is if you have first time home buyers, you might be producing videos that speak to them uh, and show off areas that are of interest of them. First time home buyers might be more young couples. So you might talk about the school districts. You might uh, meet up with the owner of the pub next door. You might do these things that are of interest to them. Uh, likewise, if your clientele is more mature, you're doing commercial properties, you might think about what kind of things they're interested in that might be more market updates and statistics um, versus school zones. So that's kind of the strategy we're talking about when we ask you to think about who you're going to speak to. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of diving deeper into knowing your demographics, you need to know the behaviors within the community. So if there's big events coming up, I know in all over the world, there are music festivals that come up. So if that's something that's near your town and you have a client that's interested in that, you know, maybe you talk about that, Hey, this is the site for whatever music festival, insert your music festival here. Um, or maybe it's, we have a great farmer's market every Friday morning, come, come shop this street on Fridays. You know, you need to know more in depth. And then you also need to get to know your client a little bit better so you can guide them and then make a video about that. Who knows? Now, so it sounds ago, like you're saying that COVID, Luke uh, would be doing these community service events back in LA and be wearing his like red school shirt or red community shirt, whatever it was. And he just would do a quick spiel of like where he was and it was all just a community vibe it wasn't meant for selling but people really connected with that um, type of type of interaction what were you going to say so, so let's so so yeah well I, what i was going to say is, is is let's brainstorm this a little bit so it's relevant specifically to james and relevant to erhan like what would that what could that look like for you guys in your local communities what 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 could you do to show yourself as being the the local area expert in your community so let's go with you james what would what would you do um yeah i mean i live in quite a small town but um i suppose the towns around me are, are quite similar um I guess talking about local events that are going on, there's always, you know, this and that happening, markets, things like that could be talking about, as well as, um, you know, properties that are upcoming in the local area, that sort of thing. Yeah, so, those are all good. Yeah, and, 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 I think, and I think the key there is, is, and Jennifer and Alyssa will probably share their kind of expertise on this, is, is what percentage is about the properties versus what percentage is just about what's happening in the community. And, and I think they'll agree that, that, that it's, it's, it's more important to be about what's happening in the community and the lifestyle and the local restaurants and the cafes and the bars and the schools and the, and the events than it is, frankly, about, you know, the, the properties per se. Would, would you girls agree? Is that, is that true? Yeah, we're in the mindset that the lifestyle and that connection is what brings people in, but we're also very of the strong opinion that once they are on your social media or all are on your YouTube channel, that there is content where they do learn. And that's what, you know, one thing draws them in and one thing keeps them there. And so both are, both are important. Yeah, yeah. And, like you would, and you would say that video is is relevant to both of those, right? So to draw them in, use video, but then when they're when they're in the inner circle, then again using video as the education tool. Absolutely. So I think that kind of brings us to the next slide. 
So you need to think about your video goals um, because we've talked, we talked in our last training about your overall goals for your business, which, you know, are something along the lines of, I want to get X amount of clients this year. I want to do this. I want to grow my business, this percentage. Those are all great. You need those. Then for your video, you kind of need to winnow down just a little bit more thinking smaller. What types of videos are you comfortable recording? That is a big one. If you're not comfortable at all, then you need to start even smaller and just, and just think about a video you've seen or liked. Maybe you need to commit more to doing your um, listing videos or just a, a walk around town video. Then you also need to work up to showing your face. I know that scares a lot of people. And I know a lot of people think, oh, nobody's going to want to see my face, but that's not true. People like to see the person behind the education that you're putting out there. It gives them somebody to relate to. It gives them somebody to put a voice with, and it just gives you more authenticity. And to put it in numbers, statistics, so normal conversion rates, when people see an image or a email or something that they're just kind of looking at a normal conversion rate, that's when somebody clicks to go somewhere that you want them to go is 3% with video the conversion rate that they would explore more goes up to, I think the last thing I read was 27%. It's a huge leap. Whoa. Um, okay. So when you're talking about conversions and sales, um, you can obviously see how video would be boosted up. Yeah. And then, you know, write these goals down. I'm really big into that old school, just writing stuff down and getting like almost like a mind map of your video goals. So like what areas of my community can I showcase? Um, maybe it's not the community. Maybe it's a street, maybe it's, um, a certain neighborhood, you know, I guess that is your community, but writing it down. So you're not on the fly thinking, Oh, I really need to record a video, but I have no idea what to record. Um, so, so let's pause there because I think that's really important, right? So again, it, it sounds like, it sounds like if there's any, if there's any resistance to doing it, if you have a written down goal plan, then it's going to help you just get, you know, get, get uncomfortable and just do it. Right. Yeah, and so it, then, so it, it then can help you prepare, can help you prepare. So, so, and again, let's, let's keep it super simple. So what one could do is do one local business per week, right? Maybe you do mm -hmm. that. And then you could do one lifestyle play per week so that the local park or the local beach or the local kind of like, you know, um, sport of gym facility or the local, you know, whatever. And then you could also do a local, um, like a local uh property featured property type of thing like a, here's a here's a street in our neighborhood and this is what's great about this street and then so let's think of a couple of others what else could you do to well, have so at least one thing a day what, what would we think i also i'm going to talk about the next part of this later but you need to also when you're writing your goals be realistic so if you're somebody okay. who's like luke and very comfortable in front of the camera maybe your video goals are once per day, but maybe your video goals are once per week. And that's fine too, because you need to work yourself up to how often you think you can post. Because if you jump out of the gate and say, I'm gonna post a video seven days a week, you're probably not, or you're gonna stick with it for two weeks and then you're gonna get very burnt out on it. And our favorite word well, is consistency. So whatever yeah. you have to be consistent I mean with. I agree, right? But I also think, and I just want to challenge people out there, is is that is that consistency is all true, but I think it also it's it's this is a volume game in a way, and I think you do have to put stuff out there. And so, you know, what we know is that, is that it doesn't have to be you videoing yourself or putting yourself on camera, right, James or Erhan? It doesn't have to be that, but I think it's about having video content that is consistent. And so I think, so I think if, if you're able to do one piece a week where it's you talking to camera, fine, good enough. But I still maintain that one should have five to seven pieces of video content out there per week. And so, you know, what you could do is, is maybe for that one piece where you were going to do the, the piece to camera, maybe that could be like the full on and it's going to take you like an hour to do and you'll do retake and you'll, and you'll get all nervous and sweaty palm about it. But maybe it's worth it if you could do something of real high value, like literally the, the Monday morning market 
minute or whatever, you know, where you just talk about here's how many homes came on the market, here's the average price, here's the, here's the, the current interest rates, here's the current, you know, um, you know, overall picture in the, in the local market. If you were to do that once a week, then that's something it's going to be harder maybe to do, but I think that would be good enough. What do you, what do you think, Alyssa, Jennifer? Do you think that's? Um, I think it depends on, you know, your, the size of what you're, what you're talking about. Like if you only have a certain number of homes and stuff in the area, then you, you may need to focus more on community things. Um, maybe. Uh, and then like what businesses would be helpful. So mm -hmm. I think you said there's a convey, con I, I'm sorry. I Conveyancer. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that would be a good person to talk to in a video because then you're taking the pressure just off yourself and you're asked, you're talking to somebody else and you guys. Oh, I like practice. that. So interviewing, interviewing another person who's in your industry, who you mm -hmm. can partner with as yeah. one of the videos per week. So again, James, for you, like do an interview with, with Erhan or do an interview with your local mortgage broker or do an interview with your local solicitor or estate planner, mm -hmm. you know, and have that be one of those things. Um, what about, you know, there's also, you could get a little bit, take a sort of slight diversion, but, you know, if, if we're talking about promoting and advertising properties in the area as your expertise, you know, I think what, what kind of makes people feel a lot more at ease is a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of background, a bit of history about the area and having a bit of local knowledge about, you know, in this street back in whenever this happened and, you know, give people a bit of background history, a bit of a story, because then I love there's that. a sense of relating to something that's a community-based thing. So you're attracting people in the area, you're, you're showcasing knowledge of the area, you're more likely to attract and, and strike a tone with people in that area, especially if you live and work in that area as well. So you, you need to sort of build your community person profile, as it were. Uh, do your research, you know, how long have you lived there? Maybe you've moved there recently. Maybe you've always lived there, you know, take advantage of that because that human element of relating to other people that are in the area or have lived there, share that same knowledge. Even people that have lived there maybe longer than you have. The fact you brought to their attention a fun fact about that area or that street or whatever um, can resonate well with people. And it, and it just sort of, uh, even if it's that little nugget, oh, I never knew that. And then I was like, where did you hear that? Because then that's going to come up in the conversation. They're going to have with somebody else. And you'll get remembered because you educated them on that one fun fact. I love that. Absolutely. Your ideas get put to the fore and you you become made, you know, you're, you're more evident and visual to people, not just in what you're saying, but you, you create a human element. And that's what I think we're really trying to achieve here because you want people to trust you. They're not going to trust a brand or a person that's yes. an image or a cartoon or, or a figment or, or whatever, it's going to be you. And you, uh, Luke, you, you alluded to sort of bloopers, even including a few bloopers, if you can edit them correctly and cleverly, <laughs> gives a good human element. It's like, oh, God, I've got to do this video or whatever it is, you know, you suddenly will automatically, you, you get that window into somebody's life of what they really like. I think it's yeah. great. Well, and I think you need to run with that history aspect because you just got very animated and excited about that. And that's, that will show. Yeah, interesting fact, local facts, and particularly, you know, where we are here in the UK, right? We're so lucky to have these neighborhoods that are so, like, there's so much history. Yeah. And so to be able to, to kind of expand on that, um, I think is great. Now, I know that we don't want to spend a, a ton of time on this, but let me just rattle through you know, just some ideas. And then I'm sure what, the, what we can do is we can send this out as a list. But, but when you talk about like having that checklist, what you could do is you can literally have a list of video content ideas, and then you can have like the date that you do it. And then a little checkbox of whether you put this on a blog, whether you put it on your Facebook, whether you put it on your Insta, whether you put it on your, uh, on your LinkedIn. And here's just, just a bunch of ideas, right? So neighborhood beat on the on foot on the road, aerial tours of communities, park views, different parks in the area, small business spotlights, um, you know, five ways to create a stellar home office in your in your town. Um, how many times should you refinance your home loan in your town? Um, mm -hmm. How the four biggest mistakes when buying a home and how to avoid them. 
how to sell your home for the best price and only move once, how to stage your home, how to prepare a home for sale. What does conveyancing mean, right, Erhan? What, yeah. does, what does mortgage broker mean? How to select, you know, your, the best real estate agent to sell your home. What's the difference between a bank and a mortgage company? Um, why don't, why don't, why don't, um, uh, or five options to sell your home in 2023. So again, just so many ideas. And, and the, the point is, I guess, to, to have that, you know, very open mind to all these different ideas and then pick three or four that are relevant for your community and then just consistently do those on a week by week basis. I think Luke, you have come up with a brilliant idea and we're now going to put that into a list and give it to all of you lovely people who have joined our call <laughs> because sometimes I forget to take notes during videos and it would be nice to have a refresh. So we will send you guys a list of options and ideas and you can highlight and go through which ones you think are relevant to your business um, and go from there. But um, I think we kind of talked a little bit about why videos. So I'm not going to dive too much into this. Um, I'm actually just going to skip it because we've really covered it. Um, so we're going to go into your, oh, go your platforms. Um, so there are a lot of platforms there are a lot of video platforms. I'm sure all of you have heard of YouTube, I hope. Um, so YouTube is one of the largest and, um, it's, I'm gonna let Jennifer talk about this cause I'm not the YouTube professional. I'm the bottom two. Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, just a couple of really overall highlights on YouTube. One, it is the largest search engine under Google, which means that you have an opportunity by posting videos there to take up more internet real estate, which means through keywords and hashtags and proper descriptions, lengthy descriptions, you will not only appear on YouTube when people are searching for things in your area, but you would also appear on Google. It's great for visibility. If you can link to your website from it too, it's great for your website. Uh, with YouTube, it concentrates on longer um, video. Well, we'll talk about long video. Yeah, we'll talk video. about the difference. But, where you um, those. It gives you another opportunity to brand yourself um, through thumbnails and topics uh, and set yourself up as the expert. You can create separate, separate channels. Um, so if you did that Monday morning market update and um, you did a uh, uh, exploration of architecture in the area you could keep that as separate channels and still under yourself so it's really a great way to organize brand diversify and show up online that's my spiel on youtube and and and, and uh, let me just add something because it's important in case in case you miss this so so youtube is a search engine right so so versus a social media platform like a facebook or an instagram youtube is a search engine and, and it's powered by and owned by Google, right? So, it, so that's why it's the second largest because it's part of Google. And, and so if we, if we also know and acknowledge that, that video is now the, the most powerful medium currently to reach people, then it makes sense, right? That, that YouTube is, is gonna be the place where most things will be found if they're a video. The other thing to bear in mind is that, is that it is a, a place that can be used as your kind of like your long form storage. So all of your content could ultimately end up on YouTube. So James and Erhan, if you don't already, you want to form a YouTube channel, right? And the YouTube channel is where all of your content ultimately ends up on the longer version or what have you. You can have different shows, you can have different, different clips, different lengths, different channels, like, like, the, like the ladies are saying, but, but view it as a place where all of that content should ultimately end up on there. I think that, that seems to be the, the current wisdom around that. And so what's, what's important about that is that when, when you're starting to look into SEO, search engine optimization, looking to get found, you know, the old joke, right? Where do you want to hide the dead bodies on the second page of Google, right? So it's like, you want to be on that first page of Google. And so one of the best ways to do that is to have more videos on YouTube because Google and YouTube, obviously they're, they're one and the same. So when you go to that Google business page and you create your free Google business page, the more video you add in, the more it will help you get recognized so that you're then found um, early on on Google. 
Um, so I hope that I hope that makes sense. YouTube is not it's not an alternative to, you know, a, a social media platform. It's a search engine, right? Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. Um, okay, so I get to talk about Instagram and TikTok. Yay. Um, so Instagram, I I'm pretty sure she put together this presentation <laughs> just so that she can talk about Instagram reels and TikTok with people. <laughs> I know. I love it. Um, Okay. So Instagram reels are very similar to TikTok. I actually think TikTok came first and then Instagram like kind of ripped them off from it. So um, they were putting Instagram out of business. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube shorts too came after TikTok. Look at that. See TikTok. What a trendsetter. Um, And it was created by like, like a little kid or something like a 14 year old girl or something. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, unrelevant or irrelevant. Um, so I like to use Instagram and TikTok um, because they're short. So those are, you know, between one and three minutes. Ideally, when you're when you're learning about those two, try and stick around under around or under 30 seconds, um, which I know seems hard, especially if you're a long winded talker. Um, so maybe you you work in time lapse. Maybe you do something really quick. But both of these will boost your visibility with um most demographics, most people are on Instagram. Uh, TikTok is a little bit younger, but you can really, you know, set the trend on TikTok um, because there aren't a lot of agents in your area that are using TikTok for business. Um, So it's a good place to kind of, you know, hash out a niche for yourself there. Um, And I just, I really like them. I think both of them are very user-friendly once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, they have a lot of video editing tools on there that make your video better and enhance it um, besides just captions um, and little stickers. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's nice. It, it looks good. So I recommend trying those. Um, and if you're not on Instagram or TikTok, build a profile and, and watch videos. Like start following people that do what you do in America, in Australia, maybe in the UK and don't reinvent the wheel. Just, just think about how you can turn that video into something that would be relevant in your community um, and your personality. I think that's a really, really good point, right? Is is that you can look at, that's where there's trending music and trending kind of like, so, so look at what's trending right now. And then how can you create something similar in your own community? And, and, and I'll often, you know, draw big parallels, right? Between down here in the Southwest where James Taylor and I are, is very much like that kind of upper east coast kind of cape coddy vibe so you so you could go and and look at stuff that's happening you know in nantucket or cape cod or martha's vineyard and like pretty much rip off and duplicate one of those types of videos because it's going to be relevant to the audience here and so that would be a good way to to sort of you know maybe start you know looking at content um, and then, and then Erhan for you, like, you know, you're in London, right? You're right in the center of town. Go look at what the New York agents are doing. Go look at what the New York solicitors are doing and then R and D rip off and duplicate that because, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that stuff is already out there. And, and so, you know, again, like, like Alyssa said, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And, and, you know, they're going to be flattered. They're like, Oh, what a trendsetter I am. People are using my ideas and turning them into more content so it's good oh in london that's so cool you have so many opportunities to find all the cool things you, your your list of opportunities is endless yeah um okay so long video versus short video so i know we kind of touched on long video and short video um but long video hold on i gotta move you guys i can't read my little description long videos are long they're exactly what they say they are so they're usually over three minutes um if you're going to post stuff on YouTube, that's going to be a longer video, um, you know, make sure that you keep the attention. So you're not just talking at the camera, you're kind of engaging, you're doing stuff that's going to keep your audience there. Um, so again, going back to your history stuff, like that's really interesting. People really like that. So I think if you're going to post, you know, a long series about history on there, that, that would be a great platform to use. Um, and then you want to use those longer videos. If that's more your jam, use those longer videos to shorten and create your short videos, which would be like a trailer. You know, obviously all movies have a trailer. Think of it kind of similar to that. If you're going to start with long video, make a trailer. And then also quick updates. So maybe your Monday morning market update is under 30 seconds or under a minute or under two minutes. You're like, this would be a great place to put on Instagram and TikTok. It doesn't, it doesn't have to stay on um, 
YouTube, but maybe you combine. So you do every Monday of January, maybe then you combine all four or five of those videos into your long video on YouTube. So you see what I'm saying? Like they kind of play off of each other and you can kind of, you can kind of mold them to be long or short. Um, and so let, let me, let me, let me ask something. So, so if we're like trying to make this super simple, right. Is that, is that if, if we're not yet comfortable with editing and we don't want to make it complicated, etc. If we, if we understand that, that everything long form should end up on YouTube, right. And that everything should end up on YouTube anyway, because it becomes like your repository for all of your content. Then how about like coming up with a formula for when you create content, kind of do the intro front load it with, with something that's very relevant right away that could become a 30 second clip that could become something that you put on those shorter form channels like Insta or TikTok and then then give it a little pause before you segue into the longer material and then all of a sudden all you're you're not looking to have to do it editing you're just simply trimming the content to go onto the other channels does that make sense you guys so so you know using your phone to shoot natively which means like shooting in the in the camera itself in the device so not shooting through the youtube channel or through instagram itself but actually just shooting on your own video camera and then you can take that long form material put it on youtube but then edit clip that that long form thing and then take that first 30 seconds something like that so again giving it a little bit of thought so that the idea here is that you can shoot one piece of content and not have to worry about editing or anything like that right away. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've talked a lot at you guys and I wanna make sure that you guys are having an opportunity to ask us questions So um, and ask Luke questions. So if you guys have questions about anything we've talked about, please, you know, shout it out. If you, if you want us to keep going, we can keep going. Um, yeah, sorry. No. Okay. Um, um, sorry, oh. just quickly one, but you haven't, uh, on those ones, didn't sort of mention Facebook. Do you not use that one a bit? Yeah. Or? So if you post a Facebook, I mean, an Instagram reel, you should be able to share it to your Facebook. Okay. Um, and then also anytime, because Facebook doesn't have those time constraints, um, anytime you're doing a YouTube, you can also add it to Facebook. Um, or anytime you're doing, you know, Instagram live, you can, I, yeah, you can add that to Facebook too. Okay, it cross references with uh, Instagram and Facebook are linked to linked if you allow it on your phone. So every time you post someone, it automatically populates on the other anyway. Yeah, I yeah. think I've, I've seen that. And mm -hmm. um, all the, the property tours that I've done all tend to be landscape because I use them on the portals and landscape works better for that sort of thing. Um, but I'm sort of seeing that a lot of the stuff on um, uh, sort of Facebook and Instagram and the others are all um, portrait. Yeah. So for landscape videos, for home, home tours or whatever you're doing, those are awesome. Um, they're usually a little bit longer. So again, YouTube and then put them on Facebook, continue what you're doing with those. Don't, don't alter that. But maybe what you do is now that you have these listing videos, maybe you cut them just a little bit. And so they're shorter for just a second. And you can kind of give like like a teaser trailer and that's okay if those are horizontal on Instagram um I wouldn't do all of your content that way because they do get a little small but you know if your property videos are professionally done don't redo them portrait just because you need them to be portrait like just clip them to be shorter and put them on Instagram um and then you can reference your YouTube and your Facebook um and if you guys don't already do this I recommend looking into Linktree um, and you can create a profile very quickly and add all of your links. So if you need to add your YouTube channel, you need to add your YouTube channel. If you need to add your Facebook, you need to add your Facebook. Um, if you have a website, if you have listings that are in a different location, if you're um, doing a training or an event, you know, all of that needs to be in your link tree because then you can say, want to see the full video, go head to my bio and click the link, you know, whatever. And they'll be able to find all of your videos giving you more and what i'm seeing a lot of agents now doing across and i'm going to talk specifically now about the brokerage model right whether you're with the agency exp keller williams remax whoever it is you're creating your own personal authentic brand right 
And so, yes, of course, there's value to having a website, but ultimately people are going to find you on social anyway. And so it seems like the simplest way that you can, you can kind of have everything all in one spot is using that link tree and then having that posted in your bio, in your social media channels, so that ultimately your social media performs a function of a website. You may choose to have a website anyway, but the website might have to be branded in a particular way for it to be compliant with your brokerage, whereas it's fair game on, on, on social, you can do whatever you want. Right. So it's like, you know, you have the opportunity to, to use Linktree kind of as a, you know, an all in one place where all of your content resides um, and people have access to it. The other thing as well, just real quick on, on the, on the tips with, with, if you're quite right, you know, that the, the, the nicer videos are shot landscape and that's how, and you talk to anybody who's, you know, old school enough to be filming on film or, or proper video, they'll all say, oh God, you know, shoot horizontal, it's so much better. When, because the, the social media channels by and large prefer vertical, um, what you can do is you can make sure that you leave enough room either side of you to be able to crop it. So that way, if you're in the middle of the frame, James, when you're shooting something in a horizontal format, because that looks nicer, for the listing presentation videos and, it, and it's gonna be fine on your YouTube channel anyway. If you make sure that if you're delivering something to camera that there's room either side of you, then it can be easily cropped for horizontal um, on, yeah. the, on, the, on the various channels. <clears throat> so just a good, a good tip there. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about reels and TikToks and videos that don't require your face, because I get that a lot that people do not want to be on camera and it is intimidating. Um, and you often want to look your best, which I understand um, you don't want to be wearing a sweatshirt and not combed your hair or something. Um, so some ideas that we came up with, and again, we'll send you a list of some more Um along with all of Luke's awesome ideas that he's going to send me later. Um, some tours around town. We've talked about this. Those are great, um, especially for the history, especially because people are seemingly obsessed with the UK. Um, you probably will get people that aren't in the UK, but that's okay because they'll share it. Um, so, you know, show your little village, show your town, show the cute little market that you guys have, you know, whatever it is, just, just show it, walk around. You don't even have to talk if you don't want to. Um, you can just film it on your phone, walking around and then go in and throw audio in later. Like it's, it's, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. If you don't want your face in there. Um, another thing that's good are collage videos. So if you are a person who has not been in the habit of taking videos, but you have a lot of great still photos, you can, you can cut those all together and it runs through them like kind of a quick carousel. And again, you just add music to them. Those are very old school ideas from when people used to do those long slideshows at like family reunions or whatever, where it's just constant reel of people. Same family thing. Reunions, where you at? Oh, bad ones. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just, they run through and people like those. And especially if you make them go quick, the faster your video goes, the more times people have to watch it. So that's what you want. You want those views to go up. So if you add a 1.5 second photo 10 times, they're going to watch it because that's only like, you know, that's a good tip seconds. for the home tours too. You don't have to go slow, faster can be okay because it makes people watch it again, which makes your views go up, which means your profile will be boosted, which means they're going to be looking at other things. So um, I think that's, a, that's probably, that's, that's a really, really, because what you're, what you're doing there is, is you're acknowledging that there's a different way of communicating with audiences on social media than there are in traditional, you know, estate agency world, right? So, so the right. old days of like shooting a, a nice, beautifully shot, slow motion, gorgeous thing, it's just not going to work to, to a certain audience on social. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's about being able to adapt, you know, to meet the audience. And so, so I, I love all those ones where it's like super quick, like, you know, um, track through a house and like, and then it suddenly pauses on something and then it tracks again, you know, all that, all that sort of stuff. I think, again, <clears throat> nothing wrong with, with doing your traditional listing presentation videos, but to add, you know, add into the mix stuff that's much more commonplace now on Insta and Reels and things with those fast forward things. Oh, in case you guys aren't aware, your phone has all of those settings right in here. Slow-mo videos, time-lapse videos, 
use them because even if you use a slow-mo video, you can use it as a background for your video or reel and you can put font on top of it. So maybe it's, you know, just the rolling ocean or something, but you want to talk about the property market you're, you're talking about in whatever town I live in, this many homes are on the market, this many houses just sold, this many are coming available. It can, it Whatever. can be more mundane too. Alyssa the other day made me do a time-lapse, a time-lapse video where I just propped up my phone and then I had a team meeting call and it felt ridiculous and long. But then when I went and looked at the time lapse video, it's me doing, yeah, <laughs> it's a little spastic. But it, it's, great. it's cool, but it got tons of views. It's funny to watch. Like, I think you captioned it with something like getting a little enthusiastic during yeah. team meetings <laughs> or something like that. So, I mean, like things like that are cool too. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of you probably work at home. Um, so, you know, show up, I like to show my office setup all the time because I literally move around my house working. And so it's like today sitting at the couch with all my children's, you know, leftover food right here, you know, whatever it is, you don't have to be that cute. Um, you don't have to be cute. I mean, sure. But, um, I prefer you to be cute though, you know, or, or show a time-lapse video of you completing paperwork, all the paperwork it takes to go through to close a transaction or complete a transaction. Um, maybe you're packing your mailers for your flyers, like just video yourself doing that. I mean, you don't even, the time-lapse videos, you don't even have to talk. And if you do talk, it doesn't have audio. So it doesn't matter. You also don't have to get your stuff because you're moving so fast that. Yeah. And it shows that you do the work for your clients. It's very cool. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of different options out there for faceless. You just kind of have to be creative. And again, research other people and what they're doing and then just apply it to your business. Um, okay. So then when you get really good at faceless, you're going to add your face. These are the best because people like to know what you look like and who you are and hear your voice, especially with all of your accents. Um, you guys have great accents and people like that, especially when they're relocating to London um, or to the countryside, wherever it is. So when transitioning between faceless videos and face videos, something we like to tell people is to start off by doing your faceless videos, but introduce yourself for just a moment before show your face, then do your thing like, hey, I'm so and so. And then like do the do. Yeah, or okay. I, I was an agent over here for three years. One thing I used to do when I would have a listing is just do a quick like, hey, it's Alyssa and I'm at my new listing. Let's go walk through it. And then we walk through the listing. Um, so it's literally, you know, three seconds of my face and then the rest is just the house or whatever it is. So, you know, that's a good segue. Um, but we recommend that if you're going to start putting your face on and you're very, very nervous, pick a day, say Tuesday is my day. I don't have anything going on that day. I'm going to shower, look <laughs> nice. I'm going to sit properly in front of good lighting and I'm going to set up my phone in a tripod like this one here with the ring light. So I look nice and beautiful because men are beautiful too. And you need good lighting on your face. So you don't look washed out and scary and then just talk and go through it 10 times. If you need to, if you need to get up and take a break, get up and take a break. No, one's going to see this video except you. And then when you get to where you're like, this is good or this is good enough. I'm going to do it, pull the trigger and post it because it's only going to get easier after you do that first one. That first one seems to be the hardest, but it's, it's not. And then, you know, you can also do the time-lapse of you sitting there recording your typing or your, um, having coffee or you're working in a coffee shop at your local coffee shop. Make sure you tag that local coffee shop, wherever you are. Um, and then as Luke likes to do the business spotlights, those are awesome ways to get yourself in video for a few seconds and then put the pressure on the business owner. Um, I think Luke, you just did one at the beginning of the year with a coffee mm -hmm. truck. Was it a coffee, coffee truck? That was awesome. Um, and it really takes the limelight off you for a minute and the business owner has to do it. And then you get to share their business and tag them and everything. And they share it with their people and tag you and everything. And it's just a mutually beneficial transaction. I'm not a video person. So what I like to do is when I do have a day that I'm cleaned up and feeling good, then I go through my video ideas. I record them all. I batch record them. I change my shirt so that I don't look the same in all my videos. I might <laughs> shuffle the knickknacks on my desk just a little, um, change the tablecloth on my, 
my table, but I do it all in one day because it's not my thing to get out there every day and do it. But then I have a whole bank of things that I can use when I don't have like anything else. So that's my method of madness. Yeah. So another person to look at in your area is Luke, um, for quick on the fly updates. Um, Luke has a ton and they're usually all his face. Actually, I don't know that we have a video that isn't Luke's face. Um, yeah, so those a are a bit too many of that. That's, that's probably one of my, my areas of improvement is I need to actually get off the camera. I had the reverse problem. <laughs> Oh, I disagree. No, There's I, massive I love account it. that is just all face and reels. People like it. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. But that brings up a good point too. If you do follow other people in your area and you want to reshare one of their videos, that's going to do um, well for your um, visibility and your boost too, as well as, you know, give them a hit on their account. So um, when in doubt, always reshare a video. Yeah. Especially if, if you guys are working for a big brokerage company or market center, whatever you guys call your real estate home, um, you can reshare their videos. And that's a good way to kind of see what they're doing, but also, oh, I don't have time to create a video, but here I'll share this one because it has valuable information and you're not really competing with your corporate team. You're they're they're their own thing they're supporting you. So it's good to reshare their videos. I think that's a really good point. And, and, and James, not so relevant for you because you've got a lot of listings and, and, and things like that. But like if you're a new rookie agent who's not got a lot of listings out there, you can, you can leverage the success of your, other, of your company, right? So you can, you can showcase other people's listings and you can, you know, and always get permission if you're going to do that. But you can, you can kind of like, you know, share the love of other people's wins. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if teams like real estate teams are as big there as they are here, but like, if you were the head of your team, like, and you had three people underneath you and they were really good at sharing video, then, you know, you can reshare their video because when they go through a transaction, you get benefit from that, but then also hop in with them, like say, Hey, can you help me record a video? Or, Hey, let's record a video together. And they usually will have an idea, especially if they're young millennials or you know what what have you um okay so let's we're gonna run through these so posting schedule jennifer and i talked about um batch creating so that's when you sit and you you, you know there are people on youtube tiktok instagram that do wear the same shirt for everything and that is their you know their brand is the same outfit like steve jobs but yeah or like Mac. or i don't know if you guys have young children or blippy is a thing there but blippy wears this ridiculous <laughs> pair of glasses and a hat you know that's his thing so if you want don't be blippy but if you want your thing to be you in in the black polo with your logo on it or whatever it is that's fine you don't have to change your shirt that looks good and then you can create several videos at one time if you do want to change your shirt you know that's fine um i think there's or, a lot to be said for that right you guys like like there's a guy that i that i follow every day called darren hardy and he has he has a um he's a he wrote the compound effect and he's a very well-known author speaker all-round kind of business guru and he's all over online right and he's always wearing the same shirt and it just it has that same it's got that consistency to it and he's always kind of lit in the same way and it just feels almost comforting. It's like he has this thing called Darren Daily where it's published every day across whatever channel of your choice. And, and, and it's just, it's, it's simple. And then it's also the same, it's the same shirt that he's got on his website and it's the same shirt that he's got on, the, on his various profile pictures. So it's an idea. It's not necessarily, one doesn't have to do it this way, but it's certainly, it's an idea if you can do that. And then you can, like they said, you can create evergreen content and you can shoot a bunch of stuff in batch. Yeah. And just record it on your phone. I mean, if you want to use a professional camera, you can, I don't own one of those, so I don't do them, but get, get a ring light, get a tripod, set it up and then just go to town recording videos. Um, and then also make sure you have a day set aside to edit those videos. So if you know, Wednesday is my recording day, my plan is to post one video every Friday, then Thursday needs to be your editing day. So you need to sit there not on your computer if you don't need to, but just sit in Instagram and TikTok and just kind of come through it. I mean, if you're going to post a big video on YouTube, that will need to be edited on your computer. But if you're wanting all the TikTok and Instagram edit, 
tools, then you just put it in there and you kind of work through it and it'll save it as a draft. Um, and then another thing that I do recommend um, is don't post them all at once because that's called a dump and it's going to become a dumpster fire. Nobody's going to look at it and you're going to become very irrelevant very quickly. Um, so make sure that your content, that your batch recording can survive, you know, a month worth of posts. So if it's a market update, you're going to need to record that and post it relatively soon because that is ever changing. And so you all know, um, but if it's something like, um, I'm trying to think of an example of something that's not going to go out of style. Oh, the process to buy a home. You know, if you're walking through a slow process, how to buy a home, that's not going to change by March or yeah. June or July. You know, that's something you can talk about whenever. Um, and don't record with video. I mean, with um, any music in the background, because you'll want to throw your trending audio on there. And um, I have a little video on here that we can send out, I think we're kind of running out of time. So I want to give you guys a chance to ask questions um, on how to find your training audio on Instagram. Um, TikTok is a little different. Really, you just need to watch TikToks. And when you find a song that's been in your head for the last week, because you've seen it so many times on TikTok, that's trending. Um, so let's see, what do I have next? Oh, this is my little video, but I'll just send you guys this video. Um, yeah. So questions, comments, concerns, anything you want us to cover, touch base on, um, now's your chance. So you're just saying about music there, so that the music can take it, make a difference to the video, and obviously it needs to be decent music, but the, have it using actual music that's trending on other videos is, is important by the sounds of things. Yeah, so if you don't use trending audio, it's not the end of the world. Like, let's say you can't find, a, let's say your video is a little more calm, um, and the material isn't like pop <coughs> pop music material then that's okay to use non-trending audio um especially if it's a song that you're hearing a few times but maybe it isn't trending that that means it may be trending soon um but those are okay especially if if so you know. for example on tiktok i saw the coolest video the other day I'm scrolling and it was these deep sea divers. I don't follow deep sea divers, but this is what popped up for me. And it caught my eye because in the caption, it said, let's try this again with the new audio. And I thought that was really interesting. So I looked at their video is these people deep diving and they have 50,000 likes. So of course, like my marketing brain is like, let's go to their feed. And so I found the original video that had a different audio, a non-trending audio, and it was at 2,000 likes. So they reposted the exact same video with different music, and it went from 2,000 to 50,000 views. So, I mean, that's not to say yours will, but there are things that play algorithms at people watching that it does pick up on the trending audio, and it will boost your views. Yeah, and and and, then, I, and and don't overthink it, right? Because because it, it get the content out yeah. there. But if you, if you get into that rhythm of of sort of like oh Harry Styles won a Grammy, and then you use a Harry Styles track, obviously that's going to be trending. If you also when you're looking at Insta and you see a lot of things that have very thematic kind of movie star Hans Zimmer soundtracks to them, like like from Chris Nolan kind of movies or whatever, you know. Sure do that right if it like putting the gladiator soundtrack on the back of you showing a house is actually kind of cool now and max is saying do you need permissions the thing that's very clever around insta is all these trending audios you don't need permissions right that they're already in there so that they, they've already got the license to use those clips what will happen which is really frustrating is that if for example you shoot so what i do just real quick is i shoot natively in my camera i shoot a video that's in my camera and then I can put it on YouTube. I can put it on all the different platforms. But then the first thing I'll do is go into Insta and put it on a reel. When I put it on a reel, I then select the trending audio of the day and then I'll add the captions and the, the blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing is that if I do select audio and I then wanna post that on a different channel, it will not include the audio because it's not allowed to. So you just gotta be aware of that, that like sort of, you know, if you, if you post nat natively inside of Instagram and choose the music, it's fine. If you then 
for example, shoot natively in your phone and then post it to Instagram, choose music, it's fine. But if you try and put that on another channel, it might not be fine because they don't have the same. Facebook license. Facebook most likely will be fine because Facebook owns but not Instagram. LinkedIn, for example. Yeah, LinkedIn would not be. The other thing to avoid if you are shooting a video and you have song going on in your house, in your background, um, and that is able to be heard, then you you need to specify that you don't own the rights to that music. Yes. Um, in your caption. Yeah. I had a video of my little daughter dancing to Taylor Swift and it never got taken down. But like someone was like, ooh, that's probably not going to be allowed because it's like it was literally playing in my house. And, uh, I haven't seen it lately, but Facebook was blacklisting full accounts a few years ago for that. I think TikTok has somehow changed that a little bit. And I might be wrong, but I think there was a case recently that called it like a parody, like a parody with music, you know, that kind of like mm -hmm. thing. But yeah, it definitely, it definitely was an issue. I'm not, I think it's going to definitely use trending bit. audio. The other trending thing, James, is to, is to look at trending videos that are working really well and then to rip off and duplicate those right and then the other ones are on insta which i like is is the kind of like the um the split screen so the reaction kind of shots where you can film yourself reacting to another trending video if you know what i mean so they're pretty cool yeah, yeah. so you know lean into all these things if only to to kind of get used to it, it doesn't really matter listen it's it's like the old today's news is tomorrow's fish and chip paper right doesn't matter it's it like it's going to go away but like you know it's just good to good to practice good to, to good to um and one thing i will tell you is if you have a video and you post it and it flops don't delete it because it may come back someday especially if, <laughs> like we have had training audio that was popular in when it first came out and it did okay but then it picked up speed like a year later when it when it trended again. The stupid song trended again and it picked up more speed. So, you know, I go internet. one step further than that, guys, is that in fact, what you can do is recirculate your old posts and just change the hashtags and change the description. And you'd be amazed at how yeah. things can go back around and get more hits the second time around. So if you build up a body of work where like I've, you know, I've got quite a lot of content now. The other day I was sick, right? I was not well and I didn't want to be on camera. So I just posted an old thing. So it's like, you know, you can do that too. So again, it's good to batch content create because then when you are having an off day or you're on vacation, you still have content to post. Um, okay. So any more questions before we wrap this up? No, that's really helpful. Actually, really um, good to brainstorm and see that, you know, the way you can present the ideas and the theories behind it. Then obviously, like Lou says, you know, it's about actually practicing it and it's about actually coming to terms with it. I can share just some from my own personal experience, just from, you know, being somebody who I find I'm quite comfortable with people I've never met before. I can quite happily, I do what I'd call probably the shameless marketing, which is literally just going completely cold to an environment and say, hi, <laughs> and that, can put people off and some people are absolutely scared of their own shadow let alone before <laughs> meet people in the flesh and in real time so um and having said that as confident and as comfortable as i am with that scenario the minute somebody puts a camera in front of you and says right this is your recording this is your video there's your script it, they might as well have a double barrel shotgun paint pointing at me <laughs> they are sort of oh, like no uh okay um so you know there's all sorts of different techniques there's the mirroring where you literally just look at yourself in the mirror and once you get over that thing of facing yourself and what you look like and being comfortable with it you, you you soon let go of that inhibition and that sort of fear factor a little bit and then you just you just run with it and it's it's plain well, safe and and you're right you know there are a lot of people that get very tongue-tied in front of a camera I mean I do um I took public speaking in college and I still get a little tongue-tied um so you know it's okay to have a script you know write out what you want to say whether it's long or short have it on a little sticky note or have it on a note card whatever you need just don't hold it you know like this <laughs> while you're talking but it's okay to have a help a teleprompter if you will famous people have well, them all the time there are those, there's a I don't know if it was, uh, I'm not copywriting anybody or um, prompting anybody, but literally a teleprompter app. 
and you just literally send your script into it and it will read it out for you. And if you're recording from your phone, it will come up on your phone. So it won't even look like you're reading a script. It's fantastic. Oh, I've seen that app. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I used to use it when I did real, real estate videos. So, literally, you know. it's called Teleprompter. There you go. Yeah. There you go, uh, people. Fantastic. See, shameless plugs right here. We love shameless plugs. So if you have, you know, <laughs> things that help other people, um, that's always good to share. Yeah, um, there's, a, okay. so there's lots out there, but yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. I also just posted in the chat there's some some folk that, that that I follow that I like in the states um Glenda Baker Marley Pressman Tim Smith um Tom Tool uh some some good people that are out there you know delivering mm -hmm. some great content um I mean there's so many to find and to follow um but but I would highly recommend you know following some of these people and then just literally quite quite literally copying them you know, it's the biggest yeah. compliment you can pay. Uh -huh. America is lousy with people who do marketing great and poorly. So watch them all and you'll get tons of ideas and tons of things to avoid because it's oversaturated here. Very saturated. Yes. And then, and then right, we'll, we'll also no make sure to send out that list of um, video suggestions, like 30, 35 video topics that you could use. And, and like I said, if, if you create it in such a way where it's a kind of, it's a, it's a go-to list that you always have, but then also that you can put the date in of when you did it and then checkbox of what, what platform you put it on. Only, if only to kind of make gamify this, right? So, so visually it becomes a nice handy tool for you to mm. you know, hold yourself accountable to doing more video. Yes. Sure. Oh, and I was going to say, when you guys are making your videos, if, if you are familiar with Canva or something like that, make for your Instagram reels, make a cover with the title of what you're talking about. So even if it's just for your own reference to go back through, but it also looks nice in your feed um, rather than like a, a weird, like, you know, hooked face or like, or like mid sentence pause of your face, because it will, it will make a weird pause. And then one last thing, and then, and then we'll definitely let you guys go. Um, just just reminded today, so important, right? One thing that, that, that if you took away one, one hot tip is don't spend too long introducing yourself or talking about who you are. No one cares, right? Go, go straight into the content material and also who it's for. So you could say something along the lines of if you are currently an agent in, in or if you are currently a buyer or seller in Exeter in Devon and, you, and you'd like to know how to best stage your home, then this is for you. Or, you know, so talk directly to them as opposed to, hi, my name's Luke and I'm an agent in Devon. But boring. No one cares. So I think I think it's really important to, um, you know, just go straight into the content itself. Um, so then that way you've hooked people's attention. And add closed captions to everything. There you go. Okay, now we're just firing out. Now we're just throwing things at you. Way. So we're, we're going to send you your list of ideas along with several tips and the video of how to find the trending audio. And good night. Good night. There you go, you guys. Thank you good so night much. And Godspeed. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Have a great rest we'll of the afternoon, everybody. Later. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye.